What's up guys, Foyzy here, and in today's video I have another review for you guys. I'm going to be reviewing the Lifetime Freestyle XL Stand Up Paddleboard. So you guys are going to see some scratches and dents on mine, that's because I've owned this one for several years, and I really feel like that's going to help me produce this review because I have a lot more information that you wouldn't find out in the first week of using it. So to start, you guys are going to notice that this is the older model. I do have the detachable fins that have little rings with them. And those are okay, but they do have a newer model, and I'll bring up a picture for you guys. So here's the image of the newer model. Instead of having the detachable fins, which unscrew, it has these fold-up ones, which are attached to the paddleboard. And that is a lot better. If you have a chance to get the newer model versus the older model, which most stores carry the newer one now, you don't see the older one a lot, get the newer one because it's a lot easier having it this way. I have had a time where I dropped one of the little rings in the water, and I had to go fish it out in like 7 feet of water. It was terrible. And the other issue I have with the fins on the version I have now is that if you ever want to switch from not using fins to using fins, say if you're going from shallow rocky water to open water, you will usually have to pull over to shore and do that. It's pretty difficult, if not impossible, to screw on these fins while you're on the paddleboard. So as you can see on the newer model, they just flip up and you can do that while you're on the paddleboard. You can just pull them up if you're going into a rocky area, and then you can push them back down if you're going into a deeper area. But unfortunately, I have the older model. It's three to four years old. I'll probably upgrade soon to the newer one with the better fins, but I congratulate them for listening to feedback and making better fins that work better for people because the ones I have on my model, they just really don't work for me. And this is the paddle right here that came with it. I like this paddle a lot. It's really durable, really steady. It's adjustable for people of different heights, and overall it's just really durable, and I like it a lot. Now moving on to the paddleboard itself, I flashed some of the information on the screen at the beginning of the video. This will sell for usually around $300 at Dick's Sporting Goods, maybe a little bit more at different retailers. It's 9 feet 8 inches long, it's made out of a plastic material, it's kind of hollow, it's not inflatable though, it's made out of a very hard plastic material and it has a weight of about 40 pounds, maximum holding capacity of about 220 pounds. I'm pretty sure they all have the same speckled black and white grip on the top, and I don't know how well you guys can see it, but mine has little indentations where my feet have been over the years. It's not major, but you can definitely feel it, so that doesn't stay perfectly flat. After using it for a couple years, it did form some little indentations on the top of the grip. But those little indentations are nothing major, they don't really affect the way I use the kayak. In fact, it almost kind of helps me figure out where I should put my feet in order to perfectly balance, so that's not a big issue. The grip is really nice, I was afraid that it might peel over time being in and out of the water a lot, but the glue on the grip must be really good because I've seen no peeling yet. Uh, you have a little unscrew cap over here in the back left hand corner. That leads to the hollow inside of the paddleboard, and if water did somehow leak in there, which has never happened to me, but if it did happen, you could just unscrew that, and you could flip over the paddleboard to drain that water out. The front of the paddleboard has some nice bungee cables, and I use those a lot for my tackle box to hold it in place. They have lost a little bit of their strength over time from using the tackle box there a lot, but overall, they still hold very well. And then right above those bungees, you'll see the Lifetime Chrome Plate. I think that's nice as well. That hasn't rusted at all. And right above that, there's another one of those little screw caps that leads to the inside of the paddleboard if you ever needed to drain out the water. The handle on the front is good. It is plastic, and I've had these plastic rubbery ones before. I do prefer these to be metal because on my old paddleboard, or kayak I believe it was, I had one of these plastic ones break. I haven't had this one break. This one's held up, but... I don't know, I would prefer that to be maybe metal. I guess it could rust though, so as long as this doesn't break on me, I'm okay with that. Now these two little holes, I believe, are for draining water off the top of the paddleboard. I'm not entirely sure, but I do know they don't lead to the hollow inside of the paddleboard, so you don't need to worry about those sinking you. And I'm just going to flip this over and show you guys the bottom. I usually keep it upside down when I'm storing it, and I recently just built a rack so it's out of the rain, but when it was in the rain, these little holes and divots on the bottom would fill up with water and would occasionally have a little bit of mosquito larvae in them, so just keep your eye on that. You might want to tip it after a rainstorm and stop water from pooling up in there. Overall, I like the bottom. I think it's nice and flat and streamlined, and I primarily use this for going in really rocky, shallow areas. Sometimes I'll have to take the fins off too, and I can really go in shallow water then, only a couple inches deep. And overall, I like this paddleboard a lot. I'm going to show you guys a demonstration in just a moment, but one criticism I have to say about it is, although the weight limit is 220 pounds, 
I weigh in at about 170 to 180, and when I use it, I often find myself having water kind of pool up in those indents I talked about. And those holes, I don't think are for draining. If they are, they don't really drain it that much. I do have water that pools up on the top of this, so I usually do go barefoot when I use this paddleboard. And it's not a ton of water, it's just a tiny bit, but it does kind of stay up on top of the paddleboard. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys what it looks like with the fins installed. And like I said, the newer models, the ones that you guys are most likely going to buy if you haven't already bought one, are going to have those fins that fold down so you won't have to worry about screwing them on like I had to. The steering control and stability is definitely much better when you have those fins installed. When you don't have them installed and you try using the paddle, you kind of go from side to side and you have to constantly go to the left and go to the right. It becomes a lot more difficult going in a straight line without those fins. And I'm going to move on to showing you guys the demonstration now. Now this person demonstrating, they only weigh about 135, 140 pounds. So as you're going to see, they are able to wear shoes and their feet aren't getting wet. But like I said, somebody that weighs maybe 40 to 50 pounds more than that, around 180, they are going to probably get their feet wet. Now that's only a minor issue for me. I always go barefoot with a bathing suit or some sort of gym shorts when I go kayaking or paddle boarding. I expect to get wet even though I know I'm not going to get wet. I always like to have the option if I need to somehow get out in the water or if I even just want to go for a swim. So this isn't a huge issue for me. I don't mind going barefoot, but I do want you guys to know that if you do weigh, I don't know, maybe upwards of 170, 160, you probably will get your feet wet when using this paddleboard. Now, this is primarily, I'd say, a freshwater paddleboard. I don't know whether or not they actually classify it as just freshwater or both, but I wouldn't take this in salt water just because you can see how low it rides in fresh water, calm fresh water. If there was any wake or any small waves right here, that would make this a lot more difficult and you'd definitely be getting wet then. So you might be able to get away with taking this out on like a bay or on a really calm day on the ocean, really, really calm. But besides that, this is mostly just a fresh water paddle board. So overall, I really like this one a lot. I, what I really like about it the most is the price. It's probably the cheapest one on the market, unless you're going to go with an inflatable. The only negative things I really have to say about it is that it does ride a little on the low side. Maybe they should make it a little bit bigger or a little bit thicker or I don't know. That would increase the weight, but at the same time, I don't like getting my feet wet necessarily. I would like to know that my feet are going to stay dry, but that's just the way it happens and that's not a major issue for me. And those little indentations, like I said, those formed over years, so that's not even really a big problem either. I like this one a lot. It comes in four different colors that I know of, orange, red, green, and blue. And maybe dark green too, I feel like I've seen that somewhere. I really like that the company Lifetime listened to the feedback on those fins and improved them on the newer model. The price is the biggest selling point for this one, it has a really good price, and the only real negative is the water that gets stuck on the top. So I'd probably rate this one at an 8, 8.5 out of 10. I'll put some links down below on retailers where you can buy it from. And Dick Sporting Goods is usually the cheapest one at around $300, and if you can get it while they're having one of their boat sales too, you can really get it cheap. So that's going to wrap up my review of the Lifetime Freestyle XL Paddleboard. If you guys found this video helpful in any way, hit that like button down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for more great reviews just like this. So as always guys, thank you for watching from Foise.